Hello, good evening and welcome. You're watching MX24. I am Nuong Falong and this is Spotlight. I'll be bringing you the current affairs edition of Spotlight Mondays and Wednesdays at 8.30 to 9.30 p.m. We'll be running for an hour. Today's program is taking a look at Ghana's emergency lines and their responsiveness or otherwise. Uh, so if you're watching, our question to you is simple. Have you ever tried to reach Ghana's emergency lines? What was your experience? You can find us on Facebook at MX24GH. You can also find us on Twitter or Instagram. Go there, tell us your experience, and we'll be reading it out live on air. We're also on WhatsApp. You can send us a message, 059-28-96001. Again, 059-28-96001. So send us a message on WhatsApp. Tell us your experience with the emergency lines, and then we'll be talking about it live over here. Uh, we have in the studio with us today two technicians from the emergency call center. They will be speaking to the issues, the efficiencies, and the deficiencies of the emergency call lines. But before I get to them, let's go for a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. <music> Get gold this without is I'm tired of you trying to get rid of me every chance that you get. My gun is in the trash. I've worked very hard to get you, Francis, and you know that. Because I don't deserve you. I didn't think you could handle it. Not your Pray I'll never need your services. A perfect world where love doesn't blind all children. I'm getting married this weekend. Touch me. Don't you ever touch me. See you. Have your way with me. You use me as usual. Do you have a plan? Hey! Don't! No, this is not business as usual. This is a different kind of business. From the global stock market to our central bank to insights on insurance and investment, Spotlight is a show for you. Here, we look beyond the numbers. On Spotlight, we'll tell you the complexity behind the figures. On Spotlight, we examine hardcore financial issues. Join me, Philip Nanfuri, on MX24, together with policymakers and experts as we talk business. Welcome back. You're still watching MX24, and I am Nuong Falong. This is Spotlight, the current affairs edition. Our subject today is about Ghana's emergency call centers. Have you ever called any of the emergency call lines where you attended to? Do you have confidence in their ability to come to your aid? What experience have you ever had with them? Remember, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at MX24GH. Leave us your experience. We'll be discussing it. I have in the studio with me uh, the Principal Advanced Emergency Medical Technician. It's a big title, eh? Uh, her name is Matilda Nate. And I also have her colleague, Yao Osai, who is also one of the Principal Advanced Emergency Medical Technicians. Uh, they both work at the dispatch center and they're going to be taking our questions about the emergency call lines. Now, 
uh, previously, you know, before the merger, what were the issues that brought about the merger? Why, why do you think there was a merger? Okay. The major came in, realized that first, ambulance service has its own number, mm -hmm. police has its own number, fire has its own number, and then not more. And most of the time, in, when you are in distress, in an emergency situation, you sometimes even forget yourself which number you should That's call. Thinking, yeah. So for you to make it unique, that everybody can just memorize the number. That's why we came out with the 112 which I think even if you are an illiterate, it's easy for you to remember to call the 112 and then help will come on your way. So uh, take us through the process. If I call 112 um, and I need the ambulance urgently, there's a sick person in my house who's in an emergency situation. What happens between then and the response time? Give me a, a quick run through. When you call the 112, it goes to any of the emergency call centers. As I said, being it at the NADMO call center, police, fire service, or ambulance service. So let's assume you call the 112 and it gets to the ambulance service and you need the assistance of ambulance. What we do is we have to interrogate the caller, the reasons why you are calling. Mm. So first and foremost, we take your name, your contact number, your location, then what is wrong with the patient. So after taking all these details from you, quickly we call the nearest ambulance station to your location. We also inform them about the information that you gave us to enable them to prepare themselves well before they get to the incident scene. Then we dispatch them to the incident. Um, the questions you ask, uh, I remember um, I was having a conversation with someone and he said, uh, one of the reasons he, he doesn't like getting in touch was because when he calls, they ask him too many questions. They, they are interrogating him too much, and sometimes he's not comfortable with some of the questions. And they think some of the questions waste their time. What do you have to say to that? If we, if we, if we don't interrogate the, the clients well, it's very difficult for us also to inform our men who will be going to the emergency. At least they should have a fair idea about the case that they are going to. So if you are not able to tell me all the information needed, you see, there are times maybe the case might need an oxygen. And if, I, if I'm asking you all those questions and you can't tell me the exact problems or you are not ready to tell me everything, I can expect the ambulance to get to your end. And then they get there, realize that the patient condition demands that you give the patient an oxygen. Now, maybe the ambulance went for a case and then the oxygen got finished before they were called again to come there. So it's very difficult to get immediate care. So if you have the patients to answer us whatever interrogation that we are making, it will make our work very easy. And at the end of the day, our aim is to save life. Talking about oxygen, you know oxygen is a big subject in Ghana, the availability of oxygen. Are you telling me that in your dispatch uh, vehicles that you say, send to the client, there's always oxygen? Always there's oxygen. All the time? Yes. And they are always filled? They are always filled. That's what I'm saying. Sometimes it, you can go for an emergency and you have to use almost all the cylinders. Because even some hospitals don't have oxygen. So I'm surprised that these vehicles actually have oxygen. All the vehicles have oxygen. And then we have a standby. Oh, you even have... Extra. Yes, we have extra cylinders that have been filled. So as soon as, even if we get to 37, the oxygen plant and it's not working, we have an extra one that goes and then pick that and then leave the empty cylinder at the oxygen plant. Um, how many consoles do you have in the center? At our ambulance center, we have five consoles. And what, what's the capacity? You know, how, what's the volume that comes in daily? Daily... Say within an hour can get about 200 to 250 calls per hour. Yeah, 200 to 250 per calls. console. And oh, and you you have six consoles. Yeah, if each console is getting like 250 calls yeah. per hour, yeah. and by six, and by 24 hours because you work 24 hours. Yeah. So, with in a day, that's a lot of calls. Yes. How many of these calls are you able to satisfactorily attend to? 
out of the calls that comes, I can boldly say it's only 10% of the calls that are true calls. 90% are prank calls. And how, when you say prank calls, how are you able to tell that a call is a prank call and, and another call is a realistic call? Yeah, you can determine the difference between a prank call and a realistic call by when you start interrogating the caller. A true call or a, a person in a real distress is ready to tell you everything that mm. they, are in, they are in need. And as soon as a prank caller calls, some of them they just call demand for money, some call just to insult, some call just to sink and do other things. Some even call and even give a false alarm. So based upon your interrogation, it would, you, you'll be able to determine this a true call and this a prank call. You see, that's interesting because um, I'm thinking, you know, sometimes when someone is in an emergency situation, the person can call and the person can't even talk. You know, what if I'm, I'm so hurt that I can't talk? How will you be able to determine if I am for real? Okay, let me, let me answer that question. Yeah, let me, yes. in the first, first of all, let me say good evening to your viewers and good evening to the CEO of National Ambulance, Professor Abedou Zakaria. You know, uh, as time goes on, National Ambulance Service has been in existence for about 16 years now. And every now and then we try to improve on our operations and our activities. So currently what we have now is we've, we try, we are digitizing our system. So it's easy when you need, maybe you are, you are in a distress and you can't even talk. We have a, an app that we are, we, we are piloting now. Well, what's the name of the app? The app is called Imwa App. Imwa Help. Imwa yeah, app. Literally it means help. Yes. So we are uh, piloting that app. And all that you need on your phone is the Ghana Post GPS. So if you have a Ghana Post GPS, you just look for the emergency services. So if it's an ambulance that you need, you just click on the ambulance and you type whatever distress that you are going through. So it will just hit the system at, that, at, at our dispatch center. So when it hits the system, then the personnel will be able to know that, okay, this is the call, uh, this is the distress we need to attend to. And they will, it gives you the... And the, the list of all the ambulances and the distances attached to. So we'll be able to know the closest ambulance then you dispatch. So in an event that you're not able to give, uh, talk so much, but we have your phone with you, you just, uh, just a click of a button, you'll be able to this is, this the is district. This is technology. That is technology. Another thing that we do is usually when you call, they don't ask so much questions because emergency is emergency and time is of essence. Mm -hmm. So basically, she mentioned some of the questions they usually ask. Your, your name, your location, and your contact. When you're able to get these three details, and maybe the fourth one will be the reason for the call. When you're able to get these de details, and you even drop your call. With the app that we are using, they can input your data into the app, and it will give us the coordinates of where you are calling from. And the team will be able to move to wherever you are to be able to provide an issue care for you. So what you are saying is a, a, a very digitized way of doing it, which is a good thing. I mean, technology takes us forward. But if I'm calling from some village, my phone is young. I don't have a Ghana Post GPS on my phone. Because you're saying it works in conjunction with Ghana Post GPS. Mm -hmm. My phone doesn't have even location services. And I am hurt. How are you going to find me? It works in two ways. One is like you going to uh, using the Ghana Post GPS. And the second one is you giving your details. That is your contact and the exact location at which you are calling from. So if the dispatcher is able to get all this information, he or she will input it into the, uh, the system. And then be able to And the locate. system will generate the location for you. Do you have a standard turnaround time? For example, uh, your turnaround time could, it could be five minutes, ten minutes, between the time you receive a call and the time that the person gets help. What is the standard time that you set for yourselves? Is there any at all? Yeah, internationally, the, the response time, it's uh, response time. I don't want time. the international one. Yeah, I'm what's, coming. What's I need to give you a basis for that. <laughs> okay. I need to give you a base. So internationally, we have the response time is eight minutes. Okay. But currently, uh, per our data, we are doing 20 minutes, uh, 20 minutes as our response time. And do, you, do you think 20 minutes, uh, it's urgent enough? 
20 minutes, it, it, we, we wish we could have been able to go with the international standard. But you know our terrain and the system in which we find ourselves. Some of the things are beyond us in terms of maybe the road network. Because if the road network is good and you quickly call for an ambulance, within the shortest possible, it should be there. But since the road it's network... It's challenge. You, you yeah, say it's the road network is not helping it's, you. It's not helping. And those things are beyond us. We can't do anything about it. And, yeah, gradually, the public are getting to know much about the service that we render. Initially, it was difficult even people paving in terms of traffic. When they hear ambulance coming, they, they hardly pave way. But as we keep educating people, at least we are building on the education, and people are now getting to understand why you need to give way when there is an ambulance coming. People always say so, that... So, let's, are we saying that typically you are aiming to reach the international standard, which is eight minutes? Which is the eight so minutes. So, can we expect that soon the ambulance service will be hitting this target? As of last year, we were doing 26 minutes. So, if this year we've moved from 26 to 20, 20. 20 minutes, at least there are... Give me a target. So, maybe there, in the next year... You, you, you'll be reaching uh, maybe 10 minutes or, or 15 minutes, or in the next two years, you'll be reaching... Yeah. Which, which, we, we're working it? towards that, that we'll be able to get to the international standard. You're working towards the international standard, but do you have a timeline for getting to the international standard? Oh, hopefully, by next year, we should be hitting, if not the exact figure, at least... The exact figure 10, of 8 minutes. Between, between 10 to 12 minutes, okay. at least we've made... Uh, and input and trying to also improve the system. So you, you realize that there needs to be some improvement there. Sure. So you're working towards an improvement of 8 minutes to 10 minutes within sure. the next year. Yeah. Interesting. So when, when you recruit agents, what kind of training is given to them? Can I just leave school and say I'm coming to join this agency? What, what training do I need? Actually, it's not everybody who can work at the this person. Why, why not? Why can't I come and work there? Yes. You need to go through training. So we go through training. And it's not just an ordinary training. You go through even the ambulance training itself. Because as a dispatcher, if you are the ambulance department, you should have a fair idea about what to tell. Somebody can call and it's not always that they even need the ambulance. But you can give a medical direction. Do this, do that. So after that, we have the communication aspects where we train almost every personnel. So after the training, you come and we do the practical aspect too, because you can't just do the theory and then you tell them to come mm. and sit at the dispatch center. So then we take out the, we come and do the practical aspects. So you can't just get up and say, I finished school, I'm going to work at the dispatch center. No, you can't do How it. long is this training? How long does it take to train your, your agents, typically? So, so basically, we, we have two sections of the training. One is for a year, and another one is, is two years. But as she, I want to reiterate the point that she, she said. Uh, you know, it's not just about picking a, a phone call and returning uh, whatever uh, request the, uh, the clients have made. Mm. You sometimes... It's important that you have the, the medical background because we go through, after SHS or uni, you go through this one year, two years uh, training. So afterwards, you come, you come back refined knowing uh, your barriers in terms of emergency medical service. So when you come and maybe somebody needs, uh, somebody requests for the service, you should be able to ascertain whether you should dispatch an ambulance immediately or this person needs... Uh, the agent response compared to maybe the second person. And sometimes you need to also give an online uh, medical care before the ambulance even gets to the scene. Because as we said, time is of essence. So if the ambulance doesn't get there on time, at least the family member, maybe let's say somebody, let me give an example. Somebody has collapsed and uh, is unconscious. You don't have to leave the person lying at his or her back. We, okay. we, we, so while you are dispatching your, your people, uh -huh. you, 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 know, you teach them the basic with, with the, the caller on how, how to... That is it. So you tell them maybe position the, pe the person on his or her side. So even if there is any secretion in there, when you position the person, the person is lying on the side, a secretion will drew from the mouth. Mm. But if the person is lying at the back, it will go into the airway, and by the time you realize, the patient might pass on. So there are certain techniques that we can... We need to learn. We are out there also uh, educating the general public on some of these techniques so that we'll be able to know what to do at any point in time. So you have refresher courses. Or when you do the training and you come and you are there, uh, there's no other, there's no extra thing 
oh, we do our management or mo, mo, uh, always organize refresher courses for us. Aside the training, the training one year, two years, you come back. Every year we do refresher courses for our personnel. At the agents within your, your center, are they all, um, do you have specific agents for specific roles or are you trained in everything from picking the call to treating the patient? We treat everything or they need to know. It, it's not, you can be at the dispatch center today, tomorrow you can be at the station to join the ambulance to go for a case. So the training goes both. So somebody at the station can do the communication work. Somebody at the call center can also do the station work. Are you, uh, do you listen to public perception about the ambulance service? We do. Yes, we do. We, we do. When you say you do, which, which of you is going to take? <laughs> you both answered at the same time. So it means you are well aware of public perception. Yeah, we, uh, we, we are serving the public. So we if we don't, we don't uh, listen to the public and take their feedback in good faith, mm. it will not help us to be able to improve on our system. So what we do is we have um, a customer service survey that we do. Okay. At any point, when we finish any case, we call the clients and we ask certain questions to mm. be able to improve on our system. So we wouldn't say we don't listen to... Uh, these these the are clients client. that you have served? These are clients that we've served. So every client that we, we serve, we, we get back to the client and take, we ask certain questions mm. to be able to improve on our system. Right. Uh, beyond, you know, so, so this answer speaks to the fact that you are doing something to counter the public opinion. So you are seeking feedback, but the people out there, uh, do you ever get negative feedback? Yeah, we do. Negative feedback, as, as a system, obviously, you will get negative feedback in terms of, like, our response time that I, I even mentioned. Somebody expect that immediately they call you, they expect you to be there. But there are certain uh, things that goes beyond our reach, so we might not be able to reach there. Because you expected. mentioned the road network. Yeah. Are your vehicles fit for purpose? Oh, fortunately, we have, we have enough vehicles. How came. many vehicles do you have? Currently, we have 307 ambulances in the country. Okay. And all these... Are these all new or... All these... Mixed? All the... Uh, the 700... Uh, sorry, 307 ambulances. Ambulances are, are new and even the old ones, some of them have been refurbished. We are still using it in other communities. Let's go back to public perception. Yeah, the public perception, as I said, you can't, you can't, you can't rule it out. Mm -hmm. It comes... But as an organization, as I said, we need to always try to improve our system. So when somebody calls and says, maybe you expect an ambulance to be there in five minutes, ambulance doesn't come. Mm. The person will be agitating. You expect that maybe you need three or four ambulances at an accident scene and only two comes. Yes. It's an issue. Okay. But it's, it also people boils down... People have different things to say. Oh. It also boils down to education. We have to let people know that, for instance, people hear uh, the ambulance blaring its siren and they hardly open up for the ambulance to move, saying that, oh, maybe they've attended to the case already. Okay. But let's say within this uh, catchment area, you have just one ambulance here. So the, for you, there are several factors that sure. are, are preventing you from meeting the high expectation that has of been the, set. But you've already told us that in a year, we are watching you. <laughs> because <laughs> no, it's not in, a, in a year, you, you know, you are aiming to meet the international Based standard. The data that I gave you tells you yes, that at least eight we, and, improved, uh -huh, uh -huh, 12, Between 8 and 12 minutes. So, um, what if Ghanaians tell you that they are not feeling your competence? What would you say to them, yeah, Matilda? They are not feeling our competence. Mm. <laughs> let, let, let me come in. Uh, I, as, as I said, looking at the, the training that is being organized for paramedics, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's, it's very intense training. We go through all the basic life support training for us to come but out. But would you as, believe as, as someone, like if, if someone tells you they are not feeling your competence, will you believe them? I, I, I don't know what the person is driving at. I don't know the kind of experience he's had with okay. the service that he wants to, uh, he's, bringing, he's making such, such point. But as I said, we are always uh, available. We want to hear uh, comments from the public to be able you to You want to hear improve. comments from the public? to be able to improve okay. on our system. But we are making strides to make sure that we serve the general public well. That's a good point. And at this point, we actually do have a Vox Pop uh, that we, we sampled some opinions of the public about uh, 
the emergency lines and this is what they had to say watch yeah emergency line yes yeah it's a line uh, that when you call when you are in need that you call no I actually, I actually i don't know i know some of them to be honest with you i don't know much about emergency line it's not from you i don't know i, I don't even you know you know i know here about emergency line before we call them whenever there is some disaster like uh, this thing nadmo and police and the fire service sometimes we call them but sometimes too there are some people who have been calling them and they are making funny of them so if you call them emergency they won't even allow you sometimes to be with you sometimes if you call them they'll ask you many questions either where the thing happened and okay we'll be there very soon like one hour time they won't be there that's why I don't like about them. What I don't like about them is sometimes when you call them, they used to delay. Before, especially about the um, the fire service. Before uh, they will come, then everything got spoiled. Uh, and that was public perception about uh, the emergency lines. And remember to go on our social media and leave us your perception. We are on Facebook, MX24GH. We are on Twitter. The same handle, MX24GH, also on Instagram. Leave us your opinion. Leave us your experience with the emergency lines. I'm going to take uh, another uh, opinion from, from Facebook. And there's someone who made a comment. She said, one time, one of my friends was sick. And by the time my colleague called the ambulance service to come, I had already gotten to the hospital with the person. How do you expect me to trust them? Uh... <laughs> you've, you've heard the, the perception. There are some people who don't even know. They've never heard about. They don't know what line to call. Who, whose job is it to sensitize the public? About it, is, it, is, it is the job of everybody. At least once Primarily? I educate. Primarily? Yes. Once I educate one person and the other person also educates another person, at least we are spreading the good news. It, 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 is, it is interesting if we are able to spread this news as fast as we can because as i say emergency doesn't <laughs> give you an alert that i am coming we are all susceptible to emergencies so we should always make sure that we we get the necessary information that we need to know about emergencies especially the the, the lines that's why we have the short code one one two it's not that you're going to type so uh, input so much uh, number onto your phone before you dial. So just the short code, and you'll be able, uh, whichever emergency that you need, uh, whichever emergency that uh, it's sorry, whichever emergencies that needs to be attended to, the team will come and attend to that emergency. Uh, I'm going to go on uh, with the questions, but before that, remember we are also on WhatsApp. You can leave us a message if if calling is your problem. Leave us a message. Uh, 059 That's our WhatsApp line. Just leave us a message. Uh, if you have any comments about Ghana's emergency lines, we want to hear it. Uh, again, 059 You're watching MX24. This is Spotlight, the current affairs edition, uh, showing Mondays and Wednesdays at 8.30 p.m. And we're still speaking with Matilda Nati and Yao Osai. Uh, they, are, they are big people. <laughs> and they are taking your questions. Um, so what do you have to say uh, about the concern of if, if, for example, I can go to the hospital with someone faster than the emergency service coming to me, why, why would I call them? What was the motivation for me to call in fact, if you call the emergency service, we are trained professionals. Mm. So there are so many things that we can do before we get to the hospital. Right. But if you are not trained and you say you want to use your own means, even the way you even sit the patient in your vehicle can cause life. So they should just have the patience. You see, as there was one person who said when they call, we ask so many questions, even about location. Mm. If you don't give me your location, and they just call me, ambulance, come and pick me. How do I pick you? Why am I going to pick you? So they should have the patience for us and answer whatever question that we are asking to enable us 
to give a fast and quick emergency care for them. Some of them also claim that they, they call and you think they are pranking you when they are actually serious. You, you heard that young man, because people have been pranking you, sometimes you're mistaking the actual callers for prank callers. Yeah, let me touch on why you need to call for an ambulance rather than using your personal vehicle. Okay. You know, uh, with the ambulance, it has a lot of equipment in, in the ambulance, and obviously your personal car will not have that kind of equipment in right. it. Right, like so, oxygen. Yeah, oh, oxygen. <laughs> <laughs> you, you have a cardiac monitor in the ambulance. Mm. You have an infusion pump. You have a fetal monitor that you use as and when you need to use it. But obviously, your personal car will not give you these things. And as I said, uh, all the personnel are trained personnel, and they have much knowledge about how to handle emergencies, which maybe you might not be uh, be able to have that knowledge. You are not because, uh, trained, uh, trained in, that, in, in those areas. In, in those areas, we are able to have that. So it is advisable we always fall on the emergency services and also help them to do their work well so that we will be able to achieve Do you ever detect or the out instances where uh, you go back and you, know, you do maybe your own internal audits and you realize that you actually missed a real patient because you thought the person was pranking you? In terms of the pranking, it starts from the dispatch center. And as, as, as Matilda said, they, they, they are well trained, so they have the patient to, to, to listen to everybody. Mm. And what they, when they do, they are able to sort out which case is, uh, is a, a prank case and the one that are. So you're of, saying you never distress. miss distress cases? You mm. never miss in terms, in. in terms of our job, we don't do that. We make sure that this case has been identified as prank case. And push aside, and this case is a distress, and the team responds to. What if you have case. a typical pranker who calls all the time? Do you have people like that? Yes. We what? Do what have, how do you address that? We, what do we, we normally educate them, or search a caller? Some of them can say, "I'll call you from morning till evening." So for you, for the person to know that what the person is doing is no good, sometimes what we do is we call them back, and then we educate them the purpose. Of the emergency line. The line is not meant for making fans, for doing other things. The main purpose of the emergency line is when you are in distress, then you call so that the, any assistance that needs to be given to you, then we give you that assistance. So we don't just leave them like that. Even this morning, there was a little guy for almost 30 minutes, he was just on the line. So later, I called the number. Lucky the mother picked, and I mm. told the mother what the child was doing with. The emergency line. So you could say they were disciplining the guy at the background. Are these people actually aware that it's an emergency line and yet they call to just deliberately make fun? Yes. Well, normally, you see, as soon as you call the emergency line, we even come in with maybe emergency call center, how may I assist you? So first, you know where you are calling for. And even some of them, when you even ask them, do you know the number that you've called? Say yes. So what, what, what number is that? Say 112. And what is the purpose of the 112, then they will tell you it's for emergency, but I want credit. Hmm. So you say, you, you talk to these people, and you try to understand them, um, but there are some people who may be calling you in, maybe I speak Zamrama, and I call the line. Do you have translators, or do you have people who speak every language? Because if I don't speak English, or if I don't speak Chi, how are you going to understand my issue? Actually, when you come to a call center, since almost each person can speak more than two or three languages there. Do you have so, someone who speaks Zamrama? Yes. Okay. Do you have someone who speaks Gruji? Yeah. Gonja? Yes. Dagari? Yes. Dagbanli? Yes. Safra? Yes. Okay. So Keep when going. you call, and maybe I pick the call, as soon as you start speaking the language and then I don't understand, mm. quickly I'll just hand over to the one that maybe can speak more than five or six languages. And they could see that they will start communicating. And whatever assistance that they need, we do give them the assistance. Mm, mm, mm. So when someone calls and you are not understanding the person, you have someone who attends to them. But how do you identify the language they are speaking? Before you call in your colleague, how do you identify what language they are speaking? You see, as soon as the call comes and then maybe I pick the call, mm. First and foremost, we speak the English. 
So as soon as the person... I don't speak English. If I don't speak English, how do so, we speak the English? So I would just come in, maybe emergency call center. So as soon as you change the language, mm. then quickly, if I understand, I also change the language. If it's gun, we start speaking the gun. If it's tree, we start speaking the tree. So if it's not any of this language, and then I realize that what you are saying, I'm not getting you well. So some of them, if you ask them, please, what language is that? Ask for that one, they understand. They can say, it's Dagati. So quickly, the one who understands the Dagati language, you just let the person take over and then deal with the distress caller. Okay. Before we continue, I have another comment. So I'm just going to read it out loud. Uh, uh, and I'm not going to mention their names. So th this, <laughs> maybe because you go and push them. So, <laughs> so this uh, person is saying, um, they blocked my number. So when I even call with a serious issue, I can't get through. Why did you block this guy's number? Formally, we are not blocking the numbers. So now you block numbers? Yes, that's when I can boldly talk about that. Why do you block numbers? You see, as I said, one person within 30 minutes mm -hmm. calling for more than 50 times. It prevents a distressed caller to get access to the line. So when I realize that, you are just calling you don't have anything to say and you are preventing others from getting access to the emergency how to block and then normally we block them for three months after three months the system itself will op re okay, so it, it resets itself yes okay so within that three months if i have an actual emergency you know they're saying that you cry wolf so much time that the, the, the day you are actually in distress isn't that a disservice to the customer so before we do we will block you that's what i said Personally, almost all of us, we do call them, educate them, and then advise them. You can see there are some people they are not ready to listen to. And you can't blame somebody for, like they said, they block. If truly you are not in need of an emergency, the land is not meant for making fans. Why do you call to prevent somebody who is in a distress, who needs an urgent medical care, or maybe, maybe there's a fire outbreak or something, just for you to block? the line, and that person will not get access. By the time the person will reach the, the service, whatever is there has been The person didn't even state why this line was blocked. He just mm. said that he was blocked. He should have been bold to uh, We should have been bold with, enough yeah, to, to mention why, why, why he, was, <laughs> he was blocked. Why he was blocked. Yeah. But yes, well, you have agreed that you, you do block <laughs> numbers. So clearly, the person is, is onto something. Uh, maybe the person called a few, like you're saying, you have prank calls, and you block the prank calls. Uh, but, but my thing is, um, how many prank calls do you get in a day? Uh, for example, because you, you have six consoles. You say you receive like 250 calls per hour on each. How many of these calls, is it percentage-wise, how many are prank calls? I'm saying 90% of the calls that come through the call center are prank calls. 90%. So beyond blocking the prankers, what other measures are you putting in place to ensure that prank calls are not coming to, because that's a lot of prank calls, 90%. Mm. Because if 90% of your calls are prank calls, you have a problem on your hands. Mm. That's oh. why I said we don't just block them. Maybe if it's continuously. Mm. I realize that today you call about 50 times. Tomorrow you call about like a whole week, just one person. That is where we come in to block. So we don't, but before we even block you, we call you to educate you, advise you. So we don't just block. This is interesting, Matilda. Now, uh, we actually have a video on prank calling the emergency line. So we're quickly going to take that video. And when we come back, we'll continue with the discussion. You're still watching Spotlight on MX24. Hello, good afternoon. This is Emergency Command Center. How may I help you? Emergency command center, how may I help you? Hello. Yes, madam. My mother, give me credit one thing. Oh, this is not a network line. This is emergency command center. Uh -huh. This is emergency command center. You see? This is emergency command center. Maybe if you are in need of police, fire service. Please. Credit, credit, give me credit one credit. This is not MTN. I said this is emergency call center. Uh, you know learn it MTN line. Hello. Hello. I said eh. Uh, you know using the MTN line. 
Hello. Hello. My name is Osman. How can I help you? Hello. Hello. Said I'm Osman. How can I help you, please? My name is Michael. Okay. So how can I help you? Huh? How can I help you, please? Hello, Michael. Huh? Hello, Michael. Huh? Hello. Hello. Michael, can you hear me? Yes. Please, you've called an emergency line, so please stop calling the line, okay? Yes. My number is 112. Yes, please. So if you need help before you call us, okay? Thank you. Somebody can just call you and you'll be like, my goat is sick, so please come and take my goat to the hospital. Somebody will be like, a mosquito and an ant or a fly are fighting, so the mosquito is wounded, so come and take the mosquito to the hospital. A whole lot. Somebody will even just call you and just shout, I love you, and just cut the call. That's the extent of what we experience over here. Thank you so much. You're still tuned in to MX24. My name is Nuong Falong. You're watching Spotlight, the current affairs edition of Spotlight. We're going to go for a quick commercial break. When we come back, we continue with the discussion. <music> Hi there, I'm excited to come your way with football conversations, sports related conversations, light hearted, lifestyle related conversations about the sport that we all love and are passionate about. Make a date with me. Welcome back to MX24. You're watching Spotlight. My name is Nuong Falong. We're discussing emergency lines, Ghana's emergency lines. What is your experience with Ghana's emergency lines? Uh, join us on social media and share your experience with us. We'll be reading it live. Uh, go to Facebook. We are MX24GH on Facebook, MX24GH on Instagram and on Twitter. Leave us your messages. Also leave us your message on WhatsApp. Uh, we're going to read some messages that have come in from social media and these messages are interesting they still speak about similar things but someone has an interesting suggestion here why don't you leave uh, the emergency numbers in public places and in communities like churches mosques schools so that people can be able to to read them for themselves even market squares that's an interesting uh, because it should be part of educating the public you know when we ask some people they had no idea what the emergency lines were and there was someone I even spoke to who said they know that there are some lines that they, they are supposed to call, but they don't know what the line is. Especially now that it's a unified line. It should be able to educate people about these lines very, very easily. Um, also, another comment about the number of questions. The number of questions they ask before attending to your plight is very annoying. Uh, some even go to the extent of giving flimsy excuses that they don't have fuel and the like. I think as they sensitize and educate the general public, it is important they also educate themselves on the need to cut down their questions. <laughs> oh, see, it's not an exam. <laughs> and attend promptly to the needs of Ghanaians. I am King from Mankesin. His, his, his name is, is there. Uh, in my humble opinion, this is Sejo. I think some people deserve to be blocked. Um, or they also do a disservice to the other people. So, so this, is, this one is, is on your side. <laughs> um, this, is, this one is from Uche. He's called Uche by name. A, such a thing has happened to me. When my friend from the Volta was sick, I tried calling, and the call attendant just acted so bad. 
When I said maybe because I was speaking in English to her, she never took it serious. So we had to pick a taxi and send the person to the hospital. Please also use this opportunity to talk to the network providers on their own side because not everyone has the time to visit their office over minute issues. Uh, okay, now, now the person is talking about an extra thing. Uh, I am bounced from Jirapa. Why do they ask so many interrogative questions? Uh, what, what, what of getting access to the agent? Why is that so difficult? Is it difficult to get access to agents? Um, what is the service in cities? What measures is the service putting in place uh, for we, the villagers? I am Nathaniel Donko from the Wasajapa in the Western region. Uh, and this is about, you know, villages. Like you said, you do a lot of technology. Um, you, 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 you speak English, but you, you, you did say you, you, you speak local languages. Uh -huh. You said you told me you, you, there's, there's someone who speaks Grushi. Okay. Um, so, good evening. Thank you for the wonderful program. Just a couple of days ago, my brother had what we believed was a heart attack. But fortunately for us, he lived less than 100 meters from an ambulance center in Obuasi East. We walked to the center and requested for help, but the staff delayed him for over 45 minutes before taking him to the Anglo Gold Health Foundation, where he died after arrival. We are very unhappy about the unprofessional attitude of their response team at Obuasi East. Can you please clarify the situation where people live, where people who live close, who live in close proximity to the ambulance center and decide to walk there instead of calling? Uh, 112, Mr. Mafo Obuase. So this is an interesting question. What if I live close to your center and I have an emergency? He said 100 meters. Instead of calling, because I feel like calling is going to take so long, I live right next door. Then I come there. Why do you think, what, what will cause such a delay? 45 minutes after they get there, before they even get attendance. Uh, thank you. I think we we'll have to. First of all, can I walk there instead of calling? Yes, we, yes. we, we have something we call walking. Walking. If you are closer to the so place, you take walking it be, Yeah, it will be ideal for you to just walk in into the facility and request for an ambulance. But we also. Do you ever get walking clients? We, we do. We do a lot of, of that. And sometimes we hear some of the calls on the radio, the media, and we equally respond to those cases. So it's not only just the phone, phone call and even using the up to reach the, the dispatch centers. So walking is, is always allowed and we do respond to such cases. I think we need to reiterate the need for the dispatch centers asking the questions. The questions they ask is for the interest of the, the client. Because one, if you, if you call me and you just say, hello, I need an ambulance, and you drop the call, how would I be able to locate you? So I need to ask questions to be able to know the kind of service you are requiring for. Because, as, as I said, let's say within this attachment area, an ambulance has moved from here and is attending to another case, and there is a case here. That means you need to dispatch an, uh, an ambulance that is somehow closer to this place to come and attend to, uh, uh, to, to that emergency. So it is ideal for the dispatchers to be able to ask all the necessary questions that they need to ask. And then the vital ones that you need not run away from it, your name, your contact, your location. But you, you say sometimes someone why, can just call and say, I need an ambulance, call? and then you hang up. Uh -huh. Do you have a callback service? Are you able to, yes, we do. to call? Do you ever call clients? They, they, we do. We call them to find out. Maybe the person called and just drop the, drop the line. We find out why the... the uh, the dropage of the line, mm -hmm. we do that. So if we call and we are not able to reach the person, it will be difficult for you to be able to locate the person. That is why we said, in an instance where you have an Android phone or a smartphone, it will be easy for us to be able to pick your coordinates. So that mm. is the, the, when you look at the technological side of it. That's if the person's location is on. It's, if it's the person on. has location services uh -huh. and also has Ghana Post GPS, which it you is mentioned. easy, yeah. even if the call drops. But if the call drops and we are calling and we can't reach you, it becomes difficult. So we, we will uh, advocate that the general public should bear with us in, t in, time, uh, in terms of the questioning. But as trained as we are, we will always make sure that we ask relevant questions in terms of 
how to also uh, provide you with the necessary care. Just before we proceed, I'm still going to touch on uh, why you think there was such a delay. But before that, let me also announce that we have our phone lines open. Uh, you can call us on 020-473-0481. That's 020-473-0481. We also have 0550-331511. You can call in into a program uh, and share your opinion with us. And uh, Matilda. This young man, he mentioned the name of the, the, the center, and he, he talked about his, the problem and what happened. And 45 minutes delay. What, what could have caused such a delay? Because they are right at the center. I think this one we will have to investigate. Because normally, as soon as a running call comes with a patient, quickly we start doing something mm. about the patient, and then we set off. So if they said it took them 45 minutes, we That's have, a lot of time. Assume, even, right? even when you call... I mean, call, if it's true, it's if a lot it's of true, time. Yes. Well, even when you call the dispatch center, we have one minute to make a dispatch. And as soon as we dispatch the station, we also have one minute to set off. So, I don't know why he said 45 minutes before the ambulance moved. I think we'll do investigations about that. But we don't keep long like that. Well, uh, we have... All the information here the person provided yeah. all the details so, we'll so take, we're transferring yeah. that to you mm -hmm. we'll even give you the person's number yeah. so you, you can follow up yes, we'll do that. um remember hello one minute someone's on the line hello good evening hello abc can you hear me you're on air hello hello yeah, good, evening. good evening abc you're on air Yes. Hello? Tell us. Tell us. What's your experience with the emergency lines? Yeah. Okay. We we have lost him. We have lost. It looks like a, a prank call. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a, a prank call. Um. So, let's look at coming out of COVID nineteen, which we are not out of yet, but we had the peak period. Uh, look at the volume of calls you say you receive on a typical day. During COVID, what happened at the center? Did, this, did it ex escalate? Did you experience an increase? Uh, and what measures did you put in place to be able to serve more people? Some, uh, Yao, do you want to take that? Yeah, obviously, you know, COVID, it's, it's a new thing that, that hit us hard. And every, uh, when in, you say hit it, you hard, <laughs> what, what do you mean? <laughs> like we were not anticipating mm. that something of this nature will, 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 will come, and it came and it, it's a, as I said, it's, it's new. So anything that is new, it brings some kind of fear, anxiety. G give me a moment. There's someone on the line. There's there's Thomas. Uh, Thomas from Amansi. Hello, Thomas. Hello. Good evening. Good evening, Thomas. We can hear you very clearly. Oh, okay. Thomas, you're on I air. To, yeah, I want to. I want to make some. Uh, I want to make some suggestion. Please do. I think. Yeah, I think if this uh, emergency numbers, they should be. They should be put in our uh, our uh, uh, people's text book. People, like social security. Okay. Studies, okay. Yeah, okay. So that maybe from Crutch, you'll be learning it from Crutch up to GHS up to secondary school. Mm. Yeah, so that even if their parents are not aware, this, these people can even teach their mothers that this line, when you call this line, it will help this disease. So they should inculcate this uh, emergency number in our textbook. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. That's an incredible okay. suggestion. So this, is, this one is for GES. <laughs> <laughs> so this one is for GES in collaboration, in collaboration with, with, with the, the center. So this is something you should talk to them about uh, so that, you know, young children are all aware of these lines and are able to call them immediately. There, there's a, there was an interesting video I watched where a, a child, less than five years, and her mother was in distress, and she was able to call the emergency service and have a whole conversation and direct them to the house, which was very impressive. Imagine if your child is able to, to do this. So, gee, yes, that's an interesting suggestion. We should figure out ways in which we can educate people. Some schools have started. Yes. Or most of the time, after they've given them dedication and then the use of the emergency line. They always call. Mm. And those people, as soon as they call, they'll just tell you, 
we were teaching them about first aid and then we gave them the emergency number so we called for them to know that it's working okay one, one second there's another person on the line calling from tamale hello hello good evening good evening please i'm Stephen calling from tamale Stephen, good evening how are you hey, i'm fine thank you please tell us your experience with the emergency lines and my only question i wanted to ask why when they come to take them um, someone maybe from a, an accident you know when they are transferring a sick person from a hospital to a different facility they still ask uh, for fuel money from the have they asked you for the, fuel money yes a friend of mine sister was at the v and Vanta hospital and hey. they were sending uh, the, which the center did you call from Panochi. which center did you call we didn't call a center they were transferred to them from the hospital to a different hospital and you called the ambulance service the ambulance service too was at the, at the hospital at the and hospital, they asked yeah. you for fuel uh, money for fuel yes before they would transfer the, the person from a hospital to uh, and to you said this is from which hospital to that was at the uh, and then of God. thank you so much uh thank you okay. we, we we have uh so this is an interesting situation do, you, do some of your people ever ask for money to buy fuel yeah Currently, as, as a service, we, we, we provide our service for free, but we need to distinguish this. We have cases that are, are uh, primary or cases, cases that are primary cases, like you need, they are part of our core cases that we need to attend to, like emergencies. If there's an accident, there is maternal cases. Those cases, you don't have to... Uh, 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 take money for do, do, those cases. But in terms of, let's say, somebody is going to do uh, an investigation, an x ray, and the person is it's, it's, it's stable, the person is okay, that in, in that instance, sometimes it's not all, always the case, especially if. Are they the supposed distance, to do that, though? Are they supposed to ask for, for money for free? Ideally, the, the service is supposed to, it, 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 it's free. So, the can I, as a patient, free, say, I won't give you money for fuel? If you are asking me for fuel, can I say that? Oh, the patient can say that. You know, even from what he is saying, his was interregional transfer. Mm. That's moving from one region to the, to the other, other region. region. But this is a state service. This is a state service, yes. yes. But that's not an emergency situation. Mm. When you look at the condition, taking so somebody was from... So right an, for, to, for them to ask the person so, for... You them? see, sometimes we just ask you to support fuel. We don't charge. Some is that th the right thing to do? The right thing is to, to provide our services for free. For free. But the question is sustenance. Okay. That, so essentially, that. you're saying that sometimes you ask for money yes. for fuel. Because if, for instance, a station is given, let's say, uh, the, person, the station has like maybe... Is that because people do not have that much resource or what? Yeah, we, we are uh, we, we're getting support from the government in terms of resources, but uh, in any case... So this is a budget more, constraint. We need more resources, more resources to be able to provide... Okay, there's another person on, on the line. Yeah. You, you people seem very popular. <laughs> <laughs> there's another person on the line. Hello. Yeah, hello. Yes. Yeah, I'm John calling from Takrad. Yes, John, we are listening. Uh -huh. What about uh, if you be you be we keep on like you be calling them and they will say that uh, the ambulance only one in and that one is not there or is going to have I mean attend to someone so some is not in now. Mm. What are we going to do about this thing? Yeah. I think, uh, Thank you so much. We're, we're fortunate. We currently we have enough ambulances in the system. Mm. But looking 370 at three hundred and seven ambulances, said, yeah. and looking at the population of the country, obviously, it tells you that every one ambulance cannot. Uh, the number of people it will serve it will be on the on the high. So what we do it usually when there is one um, um, now currently let's say we have one ambulance in each constituency. So if that ambulance moves for mm. an emergency. There should be an ambulance serving as a backup, or that is closer that to that place. Okay. So they always we will always fall on that ambulance to respond to that Thank, case. Thank you so much, uh, Yao. Uh, we are going to call the the emergency line, 
and test the response for ourselves. Uh, you have had your say. The viewers have had their say. Now we will find out uh, the, the real state of the service. It's ringing. One strike. Let's try the call again. By now, my stomach is hurting. Okay, let's let's go again. Can can we try the line again, please? The line is busy. Oh, well, uh, there you have it. Th there you have it. Uh, we have tried the, the emergency line. We, were not, we went through, but we were not attended to, which is interesting because we're supposed to speak a 24-hour service. Right. Uh, is, is this typical for first call? What, what, just give me your final comments. We actually pressed for time. Okay. Give me your final comments. Example like this call. There's a possibility... They are like your our own mobile phones is on call waiting. So it, there's a possibility that all the lines are engaged. Even when the lines are engaged, when you call, your call goes through. Mm. So it's not like you are calling nobody is speaking. But what we do is after we finish with any call that we are attending to, quickly we call back mm. the missed call. So no the reason call why. back. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, I'll be waiting for a call back. I have no idea whether the call back will come while we are on air or not. Uh, but I'll be, on uh, we'll be updating on social media. Uh, you have watched Spotlight, the current affairs edition, on MX24. Uh, we are running one hour Mondays and Wednesdays, 8.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. I want to thank you, my audience, for staying with us throughout and giving us a good run. Uh, on behalf of the entire production team at MX24, Thank you for staying with us. Also, thank you to our guests, Matilda Nate and Yao Osai from the Emergency Center. Uh, they are senior emergency technicians, and they have been here to answer your questions. Thank you so much for being engaging. Don't go away. MX24 has many exciting programs coming your way. Good night.